This is a discussion on the equivalence point in an acid-base titration. We want to determine the pH at the equivalence point in an acid-base reaction, and while we're doing it, we'll find the molarity of the acid or base being titrated, or the volume of acid or base that's needed to bring about the equivalence. And we're going to titrate a strong base into a weak acid. Now, first thing we have to realize is how strong bases and weak acids dissociate. Consider the reaction between sodium hydroxide, a strong base, and acetic acid, a weak acid. We've given the formulas here. The dissociation of the base and the acid proceed in this way. The base, of course, sodium hydroxide being a strong base, breaks up 100% into sodium ions and hydroxide ions in water. However, the acetic acid, you'll see the double arrow there, does break up into acetate and hydrogen ions, but the arrow that points in both directions is symbolic of the fact that less than 5% of the acetic acid actually breaks up into hydrogen ions and acetate ions. Weak acids, like acetic, are incompletely dissociated. So, let's look at the net ionic equation for the reaction of the acid and the base together. It's quite simple. Pretty much all acids and bases have the same net ionic equation. Hydroxide ion reacts with hydrogen ions, both surrounded by water, to form water. In fact, I've done this experiment. It's a little bit too expensive to do all the time. But if you take 500 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid and pour it into a one liter uh, graduated cylinder and then add one uh, 500 milliliter aliquot of the opposite so that you're reacting hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, you will get water and you'll see that if 500 milliliters of the acid and 500 milliliters of the base actually end up with more than a liter of water because water is formed by the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Now what is the equivalence point? It's the point in the reaction which we meter by the amount of titrant we added at which all the acid particles have reacted with base particles to form water. And what that means is the, the acid particles from the acid, the H plus, and the hydroxide from the base are no longer there. They're just water. All the hydrogen ions and hydroxide from the acid and base have become water. Now what's the math at the equivalence point? Well that means that millimoles of hydrogen ions are going to be equal to the millimoles of hydroxide that you've added at the equivalence point. That's what equivalence means. They're equal. The volume of hydrogen ion equivalence times its molarity, that's the millimoles, equals the volume of hydroxide equivalence times its molarity. That's the millimoles of the hydroxide. That means that the Volume of the acid times the molarity of the acid equals the volume of the base times the molarity of the base. You may be familiar with this equivalence equation. Remember, again, that the molarity of the, is the concentration of the hydrogen ions. So that if, for instance, you're using sulfuric acid to find the molarity of the hydrogen ions in the sulfuric acid, you have to multiply the sulfuric acid molarity by 2. Same thing with something like barium hydroxide. You'd multiply the molarity of the barium hydroxide by 2 to get the hydroxide concentration. So, let's look at an example. How many milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid would react with 23 milliliters of 0.070 molar sodium hydroxide that we might add to it? Well, we start with this equation. And from that equation, we get the volume of acid times the molarity of acid divided by the molarity of the base is equal to the volume of the base. Simple algebra. We plug in the numbers and units, and we see 23 milliliters, that's the volume of the acid, 
times 0.07 molar or millimoles per milliliter and we divide that by the concentration of the sodium hydroxide 0.1 and the result is 16.1 milliliters that's a sensible answer because the acid 0.07 molar is not as strong as the base 0.1 molar so we won't need as much base to neutralize the 23 milliliters of acid. We'll need, in this case, 16.1 milliliters. So that's the way we would do the math for an equivalence. We find the volume of base added to the acid at the equivalence point. Now what's the pH at the equivalence point? If you're titrating a strong acid with a strong base, we know the salt produced will be neutral. And for example, Sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid produce water and sodium chloride. Any Audi, it's a simple ion swap. Sodium ions are cations. Chloride is the anion. And chloride, as you probably know from studying bronsted lowry theory, is a very, very bad base. It just doesn't want to grab onto hydrogen ions. Neither the sodium ions nor the chloride will react with the water as a result. Neither one of these ions will hydrolyze, so the pH will be neutral. The pH at the equivalence point will be 7. But what if you're titrating a weak acid with a strong base? Well, the salt produced will be basic, and we'll see why here. Sodium hydroxide and acetic acid become water and sodium ions and acetate ions. Sodium plus is the cation, that's fine, but acetate is the anion. Acetate will react with water. Acetate will hydrolyze. Let's look at that. The hydrolysis of a basic salt like sodium acetate. The acetate ion here acts as a bronsted lowry base. It reacts with the water takes a hydrogen ion and becomes acetic acid. And it leaves hydroxide ions behind from the water. Now the acetate ions have been present ever since one drop of hydroxide was added to the acetic acid. Now the acetate ions are reacting with the water at the equivalence point to make the solution basic. You can see hydroxide ions are present now along with the mostly undissociated acetic acid that's made. This reaction moves strongly to the right. The pH then must be greater than 7. Can we calculate it? Certainly we can. Let's look at how to do that. Here's the hydrolysis of the acetate, as we saw before. The Kb for this is the hydroxide concentration times the acetic acid concentration divided by the acetate. And we should be able to find all three of those. Uh, we, we will find the hydroxide by knowing the Kb, the acetic acid concentration, and the acetate. Let me show you how to do that. First of all, what is the Kb in relation to Ka of the original acid acetic acid? Well, you may have studied this already. Kb is equal to Kw, the dissociation constant for water, divided by Ka. And at 298 Kelvin, the Kw for water is 10 to the negative 14. If we divide that by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th, we get 5.5 times 10 to the negative 10th as the Kb, the equilibrium constant, that goes with this expression. So let's write that down and let's see if we can find the hydroxide. Well, from this reaction we know that the hydroxide and acetic acid concentrations are the same. So that we can use that as an x squared. So the hydroxide ion squared is equal to Kb times the acetate. That comes directly from this relationship of the Kb. What's the acetate concentration? Now we have to think about that. 
we have to look at the original acid-base reaction in order to find it. So we start off with this equation and we're looking for the acetate concentration. Now all the acetate came from the original acetic acid as we added sodium hydroxide, sodium acetate was formed. Well, how much? Well, we had 23 milliliters and that was 0.07 millimoles per milliliter. That was the concentration. So we had 1.61 millimoles of acetic acid, which turned into acetate. The volume is 16.1 milliliters of base, and we added, or we added that to 23 milliliters of the acid, 39.1 milliliters. So the acetate concentration is the 1.61 millimoles of acetate in 39.1 milliliters of water, the total of the base and the acid that we put together. And when you do that calculation, it's 0 0.0411 molar. Now we can find the hydroxide concentration. That's the square root, looking from up here, square root of the Kb times the acetate concentration, which we just calculated. So the hydroxide concentration is 4.7 times 10 to the negative 6. With that being the case, and of course that's in millimoles per milliliter molarity, the pOH, if we take the negative log of this number, we get 5.32. The pH then must be 14 minus 5.32, or 8.67. And that's reasonable, because we know that this is a basic salt, and that then has a pH greater than 7. This is the pH of the equivalence point. Only the hydrolysis of the sodium acetate affects the pH at the equivalence point because all the original acid H plus and all the original OH minus we added from the sodium hydroxide, that's turned into water. The only thing that's left is the acetate ion to react with the water and make it basic. This is a, a kind of a trace. Uh, if we titrate with a pH probe, this is what we see when we titrate a weak acid like acetic acid here by a strong base. And you can see that the equivalence point here is well above 7, right here.